I'm going to get back to that story, Shunny. Just, just you listen to Boomer Great One. He's going to tell you about how it was back in the olden days, back, back before fire, back when we walked uphill for everything. In fact, we didn't even have a concept of downhill because there was no downhill. Everything was uphill. We thought that was normal. We didn't even have a word for it because there was no alternative. It was uphill all the time. You just need to, to reach down and, and grab yourselves by your bootstraps and, and pull yourselves up, shunny. Because when I was your age, I bought a house for $25,000. And I made that money on my paper route and bussing tables at the local cafe. And if I could do it, you can do it too. You just need to, to reach down and pull yourself up and, and just buckle up. Buckle up there, buckaroo. God, I hate boomers. Cappy, that intro's too long. Shut the fuck up and don't tune in then. Or skip ahead. Don't give a shit. I like it. I love the amateur Monday morning quarterbacks. So, Cappy's tired. Cappy has the coffee is about here. It hasn't even gotten to the extremities of my body yet. We were sitting in the hot tub last night. Oh, at a house I don't own. I lucked out. I'll admit right there, I lucked out having the Southern Command that my buddy still owns it. He still goes to Mexico for winter because it's not warm enough here. Can you watch the place for free? I sure the fuck can. Sure. What? Maintain the grounds? What? Okay. Sounds good to me. <clears throat> and it is replete with a hot tub. So me and the GF are sitting in the hot tub. And I don't know how we got on the conversation. Uh, she says she really likes the bed in the Southern Command. Like That's the favorite bed. He said, well, what about that? I... <laughs> Is it warm? Does it not have bed bugs? Is it not a cot? I slept on a futon for many years. Is it not a couch? It's a bed. Hey! Same thing with me and cars. And It's like, wow, it's got air conditioning? All right. Okay, cool. I still have cars. Most of my cars still have the rolly-up window. You kids don't know what that means. <clears throat> yeah, you little buttons. And beds was kind of the same thing. I said... Really? Oh, yeah, I love the bed. The bed's great. I said, oh, I just get great sleep. I'm like, oh, okay. I said, what's wrong with the bed up in Rapid City? He said, I don't like that one as much. And, like, and it was a, enough of a, of a, I don't like that much enough distaste. I said, so is it not good? And he said, oh, no, it's fine. It's just, it's not as good as the one down here. And she says, you know, I think maybe we should get a new one. And I'm not necessarily against it, but my natural instinctual reaction was ah shit it, 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 I'm, I'm not saying you shouldn't replace things or that newer better technologies don't come along or superior products don't replace inferior older ones but it was more of a shit here comes another chore here comes another thing to do and whereas i can't tell the difference you know because i'm a guy uh, and I have no reason to doubt the veracity of the GF. You know, like, no, nah, it's not that. It's not. Oh, my God, we need to do it tomorrow. But it was enough where, oh, what, really? Huh, maybe we got to consider that. And then the immediate, like, ah, oh, fuck the three stages. The three stages. <clears throat> Cappy, what do you mean the three stages? I, I think I wrote about this in Bachelor Pad Economics. When it comes to one item, you want a thing. Oh, my God, thing. You know, corporations come out. Hey, kids who are totally independent-minded and think on your own. That's me. You're so smart. I are. Hey, you know what would make you really cool and edgy and totally not a conformist? What? Thing. Oh, my God, thing. Well, I'm an independent-minded person who totally isn't a conformist. I need to buy thing now. And what you don't realize, realize about thing, you pay three prices. There's acquisition, there's maintenance, and there's disposal. And there's time and money involved. And oh my God, because Americans have become so fucking stupid. <clears throat> it, it was a celebration yesterday. And we're going to go to a donut shop, you know, cheat day. And a fucking line of fat pig Americans lined up. 
I go, oh my God. Because it's Saturday. See, the sheep, they go, oh, now is the time we're supposed to do the thing that we're free, us independent minded people who all dress the same looking at Walmart. Let's all go and stand in lines because we're so independent minded to have shit going in our lives. We have such luxury to waste our time standing in line. <clears throat> and I'm like, nope, mm -mm, nope, just could blood zero, just boiling blood looking at that line. And um, what was I going with thing? Oh, so there's the acquisition costs, which have only gone up. Not that the prices have gone up. Inflation has gone up. But there's obviously the financial price you play, pay to acquire thing. You got to go down to wherever thing is. Probably a Walmart. Then you got to waste your time. If you believe in me, there's intangible costs such as seeing... Fat, slow, dopey, dumb Americans stopping in the middle of the aisle. I'm a boomer. I'm just going to stop in the middle of a through fair. <clears throat> just ugly people, fat, overweight people. Like I'm sick of dressed in Crocs and sweats because we have no shame. We have no modesty. We have no pride. <clears throat> and then, oh, I remember I got, I went and got these um, uh, supplements. At Walmart yesterday. Yeah, I think it was yesterday. It's behind a casing. Why? Because fat pig Americans keep stealing shit. Because you just got to help the poor people a little bit more. Totally mothering people with government checks doesn't turn people into spoiled brat criminals who are entitled. Why is the deodorant behind the fucking... Why is the deodorant locked up? Anyway, there's that hurdle. Then there's the checking. I can swear to God, you guys know this. I get it. So I hunt down Bucky, who wants to talk all the time. I'm like, dude, just open the fucking thing so I can get the supplements. Thank you. You can't, but I need to escort you to the pharmacy. I'm like, this is an overcount. What are you talking about? So there you go to the pharmacy. Here's whoever she is. Well, it's not coming up. Of course it isn't. Of course it's not. Of course, because you raised a bunch of incompetent fuckwits, and now they're part of the labor force. <clears throat> wasting time, wasting time, blood pressure. So I, you get thing. Finally, I buy thing, and I get out of the Walmart. So there's, sure, the price, but I think that's the least amount that you pay. Hell, half the time you go into the place, wherever it is. Oh, I'm here to buy thing. Oh, we're all out of thing. Go to Amazon. I'm going to buy thing from the Chinese. Chinese. Yeah, we got thing. Oh, I like thing. I'm going to order a thing. And assuming it gets delivered to you. Oh, well, it's Chinese made, made of uh, tofu dreg. And now it breaks down after a week. <clears throat> or doesn't work the way it's advertised. Anyway, so there's a tremendous amount of acquisition costs. When it comes to supplements, you just consume those. It really isn't maintenance. But if you're going to buy nice thing or durable thing, all right, now you got to maintain thing, whether that's a car, whether there's the assembly required, typically that's involved. There's the cleaning of thing, whatever it is. If you're lucky, it's just cleaning. But then you also have to store it somewhere. <clears throat> a lot of you are unaware of square footage or cubic volume that is associated with where you live. You just more things. I, you think it's like uh, Wacko's bag from Animaniacs. It just pulls it like it has unlimited storage. It does not. And then you get your house cluttered with stuff. And now it's starting to have another psychological effect on you. All this fucking shit around your house. But is that thing and this thing and thing and thing, 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 thing. What about love and sucking some dick? <clears throat> what about spending time with the children outdoors? But things. Now, we've never been to this point, but some people, I wonder what percentage of Americans have storage. Oh, you fucking worthless human beings. <laughs> you have storage for things you don't use. Shit, shit. In Minecraft. <clears throat> In Minecraft, digital does not. Mm -mm. And then sometimes you rent space for your things. But whether you have storage or not, you have to understand that you are still renting 
space for a thing. It, it could be your apartment in case you are literally renting or in more formally, if you own a house, it's your mortgage and property taxes and insurance. Your, your square foot, if it's just you, if it's just you and maybe a loved one, you don't need a palatial estate. Right. You let me hear, listen to Americans, lend me your ears if you could get your fat out of it. <clears throat> you could afford housing if you didn't have so much shit. Like 70% of the square footage you rent or buy for a mortgage is for stuff. Not you. You don't need that much room. But thing, why thing? Because no soul, no core, no value. Ah, yes, worthless human being equals infinite things. Because you have no core, you have no value, you have no soul, you are nothing and nobody because you achieve nothing. So you need thing. <clears throat> you have this, you have, a, it's a temple. You don't worship yourself, you worship thing. The temple is, that's your house. The McMansion, the flat, fancy suburb home, or the fancy apartment with all it's just a, it's a homage to thing or things plural. So you got to start and you pay for maintenance, usually in the form of rent, which is the number one expense you have. Unless you're an idiot type who went to college for a master's degree that doesn't get you a job and that's the most expensive thing you have at least the paper does you know your college degree doesn't take up that much space at least you got that <clears throat> here's a quarter million dollar piece of paper <laughs> you're so fucking stupid <sighs> but there's the maintenance costs that comes along with maintaining things and that doesn't even include maintenance repair Oh my God, electronics. We're updating, we're updating, we're updating. We're up. When do I get to play my fucking game? We're so smart at Silicon Valley. We're web game developers there. <clears throat> so then you hold on to thing, the maintenance cost, the storage cost essentially of thing. And, and if there's some maintenance and upkeep, you got to do that. Then there's disposal costs. And I don't know where along the line it switches from maintenance to disposal. But long after you stop using thing, it starts to rent free in my, oh, I got all this crap. I got to get rid of thing. And if you're the average typical American schleb, it takes you 10 years to actually get off your fat fucking ass and get rid of it. Oh, because you got so much important shit to do. Watching whatever, Netflix, Hulu, <clears throat> the poop and fart show. Let's go down and get drinks. What, whatever it is you dumb people do with your time. Instead of going home, just purging everything, saying, whoa, look at this. And my mental, my mental faculties. I'm, I'm all, I'm happier. Now, for some reason, I don't know why. I just, this great thing was lifted. I don't need antidepressants anymore. <clears throat> so starting when you think about it, like, I should really get or it's in storage for what like, you've had your storage facility for five to ten years. And like, oh, man, you know, I don't even know what's in it anymore. Then you got ribbon. Now I know how to get I am an expert. Okay. Now I, I'm not saying I don't incur these costs myself, but I make very quick work of it. Like I acquire shit now as quickly as possible. I'm almost exclusively shopping on Amazon because I do not have time to be treated like a child at Walmart. <clears throat> I, as you guys know, I only get what I absolutely need. And then the disposal costs on like it's goodwill or the dump. I'm not. Oh, you foolish fucking people with your garage sales. Holy 30 cents an hour in income, Batman. Go to goodwill, donate it. I don't know if you get a tax deduction or not. It doesn't matter. Be done with it. Grab all your shit, put it in a truck, go to goodwill, drop it the fuck off. Done. And then you got some free time. And I don't know, maybe you could spend it with people you enjoy. Maybe you could spend time with the kids, have sex with your spouse, have an interesting conversation. Are you Americans capable of that? The thing, did you buy thing? I like thing. Did you watch thing? I didn't watch thing. What do you think about watching new thing? Oh, I don't watch new thing because I heard persons say bad thing about new thing. Oh, 
<laughs> no wonder you're all anti you're on antidepressants. <clears throat> so I get it. But then when it comes to disposal, goodwill or uh the dump. Now, I mean, if it's a car. And even then, all the cars, you know, where you know what the goodwill version or the dump version of the car is? I've gotten rid of all my drive my cars into the ground. You know, I go salvage yard. They'll even give you some money sometime. Like, here, right, we'll give you scrap value. Oh, okay, here, we'll part it out. There was a place in the Twin Cities you could donate it. Um, <clears throat> it was like cars for something. It wasn't cars for kids. Um, it was a an institution that would train uh, people, poor people, people getting out of jail or whatever prison to teach them how to be mechanics. And so obviously, yeah, here's a piece of shit car, take it apart. You know, oh yeah, that, that alternator is good. And here's a transmission. This is how you do. It. So I, I just would do it, but you could go to the salvage yard. Done. You're not sitting there and going, Hey, here's a thousand dollars. Why am I going to give you 800? Oh, I don't know about who got to fill out the paperwork. Well, they fucked up the paperwork. The disposal of thing also takes a long time, depending on what thing is. <clears throat> but going back to the original example of a new bed, it, it, there's no such world that exists where you will never have to buy anything again because you need consumables like groceries, air filters, you're a human being. You're, you're always going to have to acquire new things, but they are things that are always in rotation, if you know what I'm saying. <clears throat> but with this bed, and it, it, not even against getting a new bed, but I was just my brain, because it's been through all the shit of acquiring thing, maintaining thing, and get ridding thing. I it Because I got a brilliant economic mind. If you didn't know I'm an economist, I'm one of the best in the world. Shut the fuck up if you don't agree with me. <laughs> no, it's true. It's true. Look it up in the... The, the record books. Oh, yeah, there he is. One of the world's greatest economists. Totally true. I I can immediately assess the net present price, not the net present value. There's no value in acquiring that. And I'm like, oh, the price what we're going to pay. Because now I can get rid of the bed. It, it provided me a view. I had a vision. In addition to having a sparse home where everything is put away, I'm not even that anal retentively clean type. I'm just saying having a house that doesn't have more than it needs, having only what you need, very low maintenance costs, what would it be like? that, that I, I have a post-financial view of wealth where there's peace and contentment <clears throat> and order and quiet. But what if you never – think of this. Think of this. Coach Greg Adams is probably going to agree with this. Think of this, guys. Hear me out on this. What if you never had to buy something ever again? Think about that. What kind of a life would you have if you never had the chore of ever buying anything ever again? And I was like, oh, that must be what heaven's like. And again, there's you're always asymptotically approaching infinity but never getting there. It's kind of the same thing. You, you can never get, you know, things are going to wear out. You're going to need a new car, you know, maintenance and all that. You're going to need groceries. You're going to need new clothes. I, I get all that. But I was, the, the calculus going in my mind is like, okay, so the added benefit, whatever, uh, comfier sleep, better sleep, longer sleep that would come with better bed. Is that worth the pain of acquiring new bed and getting rid of old bed? Because I got both now. I got to get rid of the new old thing and buy the new thing. Well, I'm not going to buy it. <clears throat> and I said, like, okay, it, it may it may be worth it in the end. You know, a bed is not the end all be all of things. But I was just sitting there thinking after doing all the work on the house, maintaining the Southern Command too, the idea I actually got to play hours of Oculus Quest this past couple of days because I got everything done. And I'm thinking that true first day of summer vacation freedom you have where there's no more things to do, including acquiring thing. Like if you could get to the point like, no, we don't we don't buy any new things. Wouldn't that be lovely? Wouldn't that be wonderful? As close as you could asymptotically approach it. And it, generally for for guys, but more for you ladies. Just hear me out on the ladies. What if you didn't 
have to buy a new pair of shoes? What if you didn't have to get new clothes? My girlfriend's awesome. I we we went through like years ago. I'm like, let's go through your entire like we purged. She purged. Just got like, nope, that's going to goodwill. Ba, 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 ba. Went through everything. Gone. But I have met normal women before. We're like, oh my god, look what I brought. Her. Always like a, a cat or a dog. Remember, I don't know, for those of you who own cats or dogs, like when you were kids, they'd always drag in some carcass. That's women with clothes. They just, look what I found. It's precious. It's like, get that fucking shit out of here. But just, just trying to introduce that concept. Girls, what if you never think about that? You would never have to buy something again. Wouldn't that be easier? Wouldn't that be luxurious? Guys, same, same thing. You don't have to, whatever guy, you know... <clears throat> I'm trying to think what men buy. What are they wasting money on? I mean, fancy cars, but it's big time, one time ticket items. So I, you know, you still have disposal costs and rental costs because very few of you guys actually pay cash for your cars, bro. Beamer 7 Series. Yeah. And $700 a month to the bank that owns it. <laughs> That's not your car. That's the bank's car or the leasing company's car. <clears throat> what, what if, what would the, uh, not to get biblical on you, but wasn't there a quote in the Bible like who somebody who drinks from the cup of Christ never is hungry again or you can eat once and be done with it? It's kind of like that. What if what if you just never had to do that again? And then you were liberated to do, I don't know, sin, relax, enjoy life, spend time with family and friends, blowjobs in the kitchen. That's you say, where does it all end? It ends up with blowjobs in the kitchen. Oh, he was the fucking modern Socrates of his era. Mm hmm. They say, yeah, yeah, you're right. Blowjobs. Why didn't we see that? I don't know. You're all too busy maintaining, buying, and disposing of things. So it's just a concept I had. And I, I'm going to have a book coming out called An Economy of One. And I'm going to be doing like post-financial wealth, like those kind of con things like a you get rid of all things you don't use. I'm proud to say I do not have one piece of scrap in my house. There's not clutter. Not not one, not one article of clutter. It's all being used. It's just, oh, and then when you do it, you're like, oh, my God, this is amazing. <laughs> the freedom that comes with minimalism, although that's been, that's been talked about for eons. That's nothing new. It's just Americans are blinded to it. But then I thought, what if I never had to buy anything again? What? Here, Americans, lend me your ears. What if you never had to go to Walmart Ever again. What if you didn't have to go to Target, which you should be doing anyway because they hate you if you're white and you're male? What? But those of you who still drank by your wife, you know, because she, she's got your, you know, your balls in her purse. <clears throat> what if you never had to go to Target again and see ugly plus size models pasted all over the place with the woke Marxist trash? What if you never had to go into a store ever again to buy a thing? Just the grocery store. You just went to the grocery store to get your groceries. And the occasionally you go to Amazon to go buy your toilet paper or whatever. Imagine, imagine in a world where you never went to Walmart or Target again. And by the way, I'm not against Walmart. I like Walmart as a store. <clears throat> Target can go fuck itself. Fuck you, Target. Fuck you, you anti-American piece of shit. I just don't like the people at Walmart. But Walmart.com, who I I furnished my whole house with Walmart.com, saved me thousands of dollars. I mean, go to Walmart.com, absolutely. And you're gonna inevitably have to go to I don't know for something. I don't know, bullets, video games, something. <clears throat> but what if you could just eliminate? I'd say nine tenths of your trips. What if you you didn't have to go to Walmart ninety percent of the time? Wouldn't that be lovely? Wouldn't it be a wonderful world? There, so new idea, new economic philosophical con concept, never buying anything ever again. <clears throat> All right, link below, I've opened it up, uh, is a link to my course called Achieving Minimalism Theory and Practice that is now open for enrollment. It will be open for enrollment for the entire month of March as I travel to Asia to go find a quiet hut to live in, away, <laughs> away from the woke shit. Uh, you can take that if you have trouble spending. It's 450 bucks, bucks plus tax, plus tax. 
And the reason it's so expensive is so you take it fucking seriously because with all your uh, five hundred dollars for a course on how to not to spend money and get your financial act together, uh, I'm like, oh, what's your what's your car payment again? What's your car payment? Were you student loan payments? What's the mortgage on the McMansion you got that you have like five bedrooms, two of which are only you? What what was, what was it? How much did you spend on booze the other week? Oh, oh, okay. Would you pay for that college textbook for a college degree that didn't get you a job? Just, just want to make sure. Just want to make sure. Okay, okay. Go, go buy more thing. Yeah, you need more thing. All right, we got super chats. Not, not stop trade two bucks, normies, but Cappy. Other people got to make mansion. Exactly. And look at how happy Americans are. There's an irony <clears throat> where uh, on the north side of Vegas. A little bit on the east side too, but more on the north side. You could go and see like the homeless encampments. And it's it's like van life minus money plus drugs and mental illness. And I'm not even saying you couldn't. I don't know if you guys remember, but in case you'd see an actual vagabond walk through. He's like hiking across America and they just set up camp somewhere. Like the, there's, you could still do that homeless stuff. You just camp across America. Uh, Joker did this overseas, but whereas it, you, you could see it's possible to do that, but oh yeah, you guys are just lazy. You don't want to work. And you're, <laughs> you're on drugs and you're going to the mission. Don't worry. Liberal white women will save you. They got the solution. Just keep you alive to have this tortured existence some more. <clears throat> but somewhere between the McMansion that you don't need, I think there's a happier medium where you just get an apartment for all you need. You don't need to go to a tent. Van life would be, I still think van life, it, it's appealing is what I'm saying, that that vagabond nomadic lifestyle. Candy Graham for Mongo, five bucks. Going to take a tour of Alcatraz for my 54th birthday this week. Any suggestions of other things to do? I'll think of you if I see any public defecation. I, I've been to San Francisco twice. The first time was before it went totally woke, you know, street shitting dog shit. And now it's just street shitting dog shit. I would honestly um, <clears throat> go out in the morning when people are a little less drugged up and just go walk around and look at the homeless people. I mean, it's a fascinating thing in human observation. Um, I guess that's what I would do. But otherwise, I don't know. It's not anything to do in San Francisco. None of the restaurants are really open anymore. I mean, what do you, what do you really, what do you do in San Francisco? Here's Alcatraz. I don't know. Look at the bridge. You leave. That's what you do is you leave. Nonstop trade, two bucks. Normies, relax. Not everyone can be like you. Yep, exactly. Not everyone can be like me. The irony is, is in this regard, everyone can be a minimalist because everyone spends too much money. Everyone. I'm sure there are some people in the United States that don't. But this is one of those things. It's it's like dieting. Like not everyone can be like you. No, actually, it's actually it's easier. You just put less food in your mouth. You do less, less work. You actually can't. Not everyone can be like Arnold Schwarzenegger lifting weights. Okay, I'll grant you that. That's an an incredible, insane amount of work. But everyone can spend less money. Everyone can eat less. That's true. Everyone can do that. <clears throat> Nonstop Dre, two bucks. Great recent podcast on fat people. Ten is ten out of usual. Oh, great ones recent pod. Yeah, if you if you tuned into that. Dave, two bucks. My dad has four weed whackers. Four right there. <laughs> what did I get rid of? I ended up having two coffee makers. And I looked, I'm like throwing this one away. I don't know how I came across. Maybe my parents gave me one or something like that. Well, it was like Keurigs. Like, why do I have two Keurigs? Get rid of this one. Uh, nonstop trade, two bucks. Great one says Kelly's Heroes is overrated. I never, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, hold it. There's two things wrong. One, it, you should have, okay, like Marcus Brown never saw Die Hard and still hasn't seen Die Hard to this day. Fell asleep watching Die Hard the one time he tried to walk it. That boy has issues. Dre, you got to watch Kelly's Heroes. You, 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 I give you great shame. I give you the punishment of great shame. You don't, don't talk to us ever again until you've watched Kelly's Heroes. Right? You have to see Kelly's Heroes. <clears throat> and great one saying Kelly's Heroes is overrated just shows you how wrong the great one is on a lot of things. 
which I'm sure if you tuned in, you might disagree with him on some stuff. You being happy to be a black man. Whatever it is, don't become Jewish on top of it, Dre. If you became Jewish and a black man, well, you already have a black man, but if you became Jewish on top of it, all oh, the great one. You should send him a fan letter from your black, your biggest black Jewish fan. <laughs> That'd be great. He gets so perturbed. <laughs> the only thing you can make it better is if you're a female from from your your biggest black Jewish female fan. Oh God, that would piss him off. Oh, Ray Schwartz or five bucks, girls. What if you didn't have enough to buy new things? Uh, the women, well, then my life would have no value. Right. And it, let's let's be fair. It's not just women that have no value in life. There's a lot of men who just any anytime you're buying shit because you have nothing else to do. Maybe there's an axiom there. If you are buying shit because you're bored, you should be having sex instead. I think again, getting back to the kitchen and the blowjobs, all roads lead there. Yeah, I, <clears throat> there's something wrong with people who buy shit that they don't need. They they don't. I think maybe they're too lazy to put effort in becoming a personable person that has good, healthy relationships with friends and lovers and things like that. And so they, I mean, how easy is it to buy, you know, Walmart, make the Chinese Walmart capitalism <gasps> has made things incredibly affordable. Uh, and there's, but inflation's up. Yeah. If that was the socialism, do you remember all the free government checks we had for a year and change? What do you call free government checks? That's not capitalism. Now you're surprised that inflation went out. Go blame socialism for once. <clears throat> uh, yeah, there's, but you could still buy things reasonably affordable. Here, I'll give you a perfect example. Um, guys playing video games. I'm all for playing video games. I play video games myself. But when that's all you do, you're filling a hole because you ain't got no life. Um, but yeah, it's uh, the women. Well, then my life would have no value. Right. You're right. It's hard to look in the mirror. It's hard to turn off the noise and get rid of the distractions and focus on yourself and say, what kind of person am I as a human being? Am I a good person? Am I a bad person? Do I have any value? When I die, will there have been some production? Or will I have just been another unmentionable, worthless person that never did anything or just consumed shit? <clears throat> One of the most depressing, I know this is going a little bit longer than I wanted to, but we're on a good, good topic here. He, 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 listen to me, all of you. What I want you to do is go to an antique store, okay? And any kind of antique store, doesn't matter what. And just go walk through it. Not a bobble shop. I mean, an antique store where people have died and left their shit. And their family's trying to get rid of their shit. Is there some occasionally cool and unique things in an in antique store? Yes. Usually it's behind glass or a casement. Usually it's silver. We're quite collections, but walk through and look at all the junk that when someone died, this was their legacy. I remember one, this guy who passed away had nothing but a bunch of uh, <clears throat> the baseball triangle flags, those banners, just, just a whole fucking room of them. Beanie babies, all this ugly jewelry. Go. And realized that was somebody's, this was it. This is what they thought was valuable. And what's doubly ironic is their heirs or whoever's trying to get rid of it also think it's valuable. All that 95% of the shit you see in an antique store should just go right into a dump. It has no value. Then you'd be depressed. You'd be like, wow, this is the majority of people. This, the majority of people's legacy ends up at an antique store that no one wants to buy and usually ends up in the dump. When I, when I die, it's going to be like, oh, he doesn't have a lot of things, but what things he does have are valuable or at least practical. I don't have four weed whackers. <clears throat> Bob, five bucks. Why the system is not set up to pay flat tax. I make more than I made last year. Had to pay more in taxes. Inflation is a pain, and I have to fix my car. Uh, I It's because of envy. It, it's, it's very simple. Uh, Democrats, socialists, parasites, whatever you want to call them. They want to get more money out of the government, so we pay for them. And they also want you to pay more to pay for them. I've made the argument we should pay more welfare. More welfare, you say, Kevin. Yeah, yeah, like just give them more welfare. 
but eliminate the the income tax and just have a flat tax that we all pay. So in the end, the parasitic class still has the same amount of money and the productive class has the same amount of money, but we avoid this ridiculous income tax, the filing and the pain answer that that is. But the Democrats are so filled with envy and hate. I mean, you have to understand how petty and sad and pathetic these people are. They're so filled with envy, envy and hate that they'd rather go through the pain assery of filing a tax return rather than let it know that you're, you're we're all paying the same flat tax rate, even though they get more money in the end. And it's still the same uh, finances at the end. They want they will suffer so that you can suffer. For a system that's that's that hurts us both. But, you know, these are not smart people. <clears throat> Non-stop trade, two bucks. You should get a PhD for orgasms per capita theory. I haven't even written it. I haven't written it yet. It's uh, don't worry, it, it's coming. All I look some some other. I'll you, let me give you the baseball here, Dre. No economist, no PhD in economics ca uh, student candidate is going to do that because it would imply the truth that sex is what generates economic production. And that means that women would start like they almost have an obligation to society or that society that um, may not an obligation. It might be in, in some sense. Yes, but it would indicate it would indicate that part of women's value is sexual and they cannot admit that because that would be sexually objectifying women. And that's the last thing they want to do. It's not going to happen in academia. <clears throat> uh, the other thing is if. By some miracle, a truly ballsy uh, PhD student, male or female, were to do like a woman, lady, for those, if there's any um, PhD candidates who are of the female persuasion, do this. You could get away with it. You could do it. I don't know if you get hired anywhere, but I think you could get away with it. All I want you to do is credit me with the original idea. That's it. That's all I want you to do. Vernon Waldrop, <clears throat> five bucks. I thank the universe every day that not all is what it seems. The rich people are poor. The poor people are rich. Millionaires know this. Easy to see. Yep. Yep. They, and it's not even the, like, I'm sure there's some next door millionaires who just enjoy their lives and don't get crazy or anything. All the people who fake being rich, they're not rich. All the, like, poor? Like, I'm t I technically, okay, I'm not poor, but I'm lower middle income. Uh, maybe middle income, but I live one of the wealthiest lives ever because I managed my money right. It's not how much I made. It's how I, how I saved it <clears throat> or most of all didn't piss it away. Dre, two bucks. Are you going to South Korea? I am soon. No, I'm not going to South Korea. I, it just doesn't appeal to me. Um, it's cold there. And I, I mean, I wouldn't mind. I only have so much time. I only have so much time. Dre, two bucks. I still never saw a die hard. Oh God, Jesus, Dre. What? 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 I'm not. No, no. I'm going to practice stoicism. That's your problem. That's your problem. It's like not not even trying ice cream ever. You've never had ice cream. Generation Apollo, five bucks. Boomers got McMansions and BMWs and they're still miserable. Yeah, they're poor. They don't have a, a penny to show for it. Yet it's a Scooby-Doo mystery to them why young people aren't working for the same lifestyle. Clem joke, five bucks. What I disliked about Kelly's Heroes was the contemporary music and the soundtrack just didn't fit. Really? I thought I thought the the hippie music was kind of perfect for that. It's kind of what I don't know if it made it, but the that music was all right to me. Lalo Schifrin was the guy who did the music for it. Nonstop Dre, two bucks, but the great one likes me, Cappy. See, and that's the whole thing. Every okay. By the way, for those of you who don't know who the great one is, great one has a podcast. You can look him up. Sin Lib Soch. He is not a fan of anyone who's not a white male, uh, and he'll admit genuinely bigoted and, and discriminatory. However, <clears throat> ironically, in two regards, uh, a lot of black guys tune into him and like him. And then he's like, well, I don't like black guys. Well, except for that guy, Ed Lattimore is pretty cool. And, uh, uh, you know, this other black guy, he'll, he'll listen to a bunch of different podcasts. I, I like this black guy, too. And that black it's like, what? you know, it technically he doesn't like Jews. I'm like a quarter Jew, yet him and I are friends. And, you know, he hates women, but then he treats the GF really well. It's like... I don't know if you know how this whole discrimination thing works, but I'm glad you guys enjoy each other. <laughs> Vernon Waldrop, two bucks. 
Haven't seen Kelly C. What the hell is <sighs> it? Either now buying it for O'Connor. Yeah, wa watch it. It what what is with you kids today? What Kelly's Heroes, The Great Escape, um, uh, The Guns of Navarone, Bridge Over the River Kwai, Stalag 17. Go watch these things. Candy Graham for Mongo. Two bucks. Plans are Alcatraz Bridge and not turning K. <laughs> Dude, uh, I honestly, I go check out the Castro district. That would <clears throat> I'm not gay. I don't like the political gay agenda. Uh, more trans than anything else, which has been warped. I am for equal rights for all people, though, however. But why not check out the Castro District? That's something unique. That's like the, the capital of uh, the gay community uh, within the United States. Maybe not anymore. I don't know. Maybe it's gotten so bad. They're like, no, we ain't doing that no more. But yeah, I go absolutely go to the Castro District. Absolutely. Check that out. Thomas Rao, two bucks. The more I make seems like the less I want. Yeah. The more I've made, well, you also get old and nothing is new or exciting anymore. Um, it's just like, no, I don't need that. I just, Coach Greg Adams is going to say it again. Peace, contentment, quiet, and silence. Paracelsius Underact, five bucks. I collect physical media, movies, books, manga, and the magic. The gathering cards. Good. Good for you. Okay, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. Dave, one, uh, two bucks. Also, my dad wants to save encyclopedias from 1991. <laughs> There you go. Tell your dad you're not helping him. It's like, no, dad, I'm not helping you. You're moving all this shit. Because then then these assholes, they're like, hey, can you help me move? No. They they the materialist guys, they're so they're not alive. The materialists are not alive. They're not human beings. They're the they're the ultimate form of NPCs. Nonstop trade, two bucks. Great one hates N words. Not black men. They're not the same. Well, okay. Well, you can make that distinction. Yes. Uh, he, I would say he is very much a meritocratic individual. He's not going to turn away good people regardless of what, but he does paint with a broad brush and fails to realize, but then also realize, well, but I'll make an exception for him. It's like, well, then you're not really a bigot. You know, we're highly critical of women here, but you know, the right girl, the, a girl who isn't a rabid Marxist feminist who wants free shit and to enslave us. It's not, it's not even, oh, well, she has a vagina. It's not that. It's you keep start trying to steal our shit. You're a parasite and you use your vagina as an excuse. I think that's the main complaint. So then you forcibly bring in the aspect of gender, which isn't our main, you know, uh, 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 contention or, or disagreement with you. It's not your gender. It's they, you're trying to steal our shit. That's it. All right, that's it. <clears throat> Link below, Achieving Minimalism, Theory and Practice. Sign up for it now. It'll be closed. Don't procrastinate. That's why you're poor. So you spend money, you procrastinate. We'll see you guys. Oh, by the way, if you can't find it, link down below. Search for it, Achieving Minimalism, Theory and Practice. It's on the Clary School of Economic Philosophy. Unteachable. See you guys later. Toodles.